The film I'm going to introduce now is uh, Native Life in the Philippines. Uh, the film was made in 1913 and uh, it was um, produced by uh, a very controversial uh, American figure uh, in the uh, colonial government that was running the Philippines uh, in the 1910s. Uh, that figure was uh, Dean C. Wooster. He was a prominent um, zoologist at the University of Michigan at the, uh, at the time when America colonized the Philippines and um, he was twice uh, designated, appointed to the Philippine Commission that uh, charted the political life uh, of the Philippines under the Americans. Uh, he was also a photographer and uh, made a lot of uh, photographic uh, documentations of the fauna and the flora of the Philippines. Um, only very few would know that he was also a filmmaker. So uh, by the time he was uh, at the end of his uh, uh, term uh, as an administrator uh, of the Department of the Interiors, which is the equivalent of the Department of Local Government in uh, today's uh, 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 government that we have, um, he made a film by going to the Cordilleras to shoot uh, the rituals and the lifestyles of the Igorots. Uh, for him, the real Filipinos were the, those that belonged to the tribes. The lowland Tagalogs and Visayans, they were not really pure Filipinos. For him, they were hybrids. And therefore, they were not really the genuine Filipinos that, they th that he thought uh, would be um, uh, the ones who would represent the um, uh, native people uh, of this land. And so in 1913, uh, he was able to uh, uh, shoot uh, the footage that he wanted and he was able now to uh, edit them when he uh, was in America by around 1914. Uh, that was where um, he was no longer connected to uh, the colonial government in the Philippines and so he was free now to really finish his film. Now this is where the controversy came in because Native Life in the Philippines became a very controversial film uh, during its time. Um, he released the film in time for the midterm election during the uh, administration of Woodrow Wilson, uh, wherein uh, included in the uh, uh, election ballot was some kind of a referendum asking uh, the American people, the American voters, whether to grant an early independence to the American colony, the Philippine Islands. This was in 1914. Before the election, Worcester traveled to more than around 50 cities uh, giving lectures uh, from the, uh, Republic, uh, the Young Republicans Club in Washington, D.C., going to Boston, going to California, going to so many places, uh, showing the film, Native Life in the Philippines. But while the film was ethnographic in nature, showing exactly the uh, uh, kind of civilization, uh, the kind of uh, life that the Igorots had uh, during that time, what made the experience very controversial, or ma what made the event controversial, were the lectures that accompanied the screening of those films. Worcester would use denigrating words such as the Filipinos, meaning and referring to the Igorots, whom he considered to be the genuine Filipinos, he called them barbarians, he called them uncivilized, he called them uh, uh, dog eaters, he called them cannibals, and so many other really demeaning words, like they were living in a backward society, that they were living in filth and dirt. So. If this was the Filipino to the American voters, as Worcester would present it, therefore his argument was the Filipinos were not yet ready for independence. They were not yet ready 
to self-govern themselves because they were uncivilized and they were back backward and they were unchristian. So all of this registered in the minds of the voters and uh, one can argue that this had an effect in terms of uh, the outcome of the vote because in the end, of course, the Philippines was not granted an early independence. No thanks really to this Wooster. So in the Philippines, this sensational event of Wooster giving uh, lectures wherein he was denigrating the Filipinos, this was not welcome at all and this was so unacceptable to the Filipinos. The many uh, newspapers that I have um, uh, researched uh, from um, Cebu to Iloilo down uh, up here in Manila, a lot of the newspapers were really lambasting uh, Wooster uh, that he was such an ugly American and he was a persona non grata, particularly in Cebu, because of the uh, uh, terrible things that he said and he did uh, in America, especially during the year 1914 in the run-up to the election. Um, especially at the archive in uh, the University of San Carlos in Cebu and also here at the um, uh, University of Atene, uh, Atene University of Serisa Library, I was able to dig up some uh, uh, documents uh, uh, that really talked about uh, uh, the terrible deeds that uh, uh, Wooster was able to do. And uh, so uh, one could say uh, that uh, native life in the Philippines uh, being the first major full-length documentary, silent as it was, as it was during the time, it was a major full-length, uh, a long film uh, that was made uh, about uh, the um, uh, tribal life in the Philippines. Um, when it was screened, surprisingly, uh, to contemporary uh, 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 Igorots uh, almost a hundred years after uh, the film was made, uh, the reception was kind of different. While we were expecting uh, that the Igorots would uh, uh, be angry at uh, Wooster, uh, their attention mainly uh, went into uh, uh, their um, uh, discovery of their ancestors in the film, their long lost ancestors, suddenly they recognized on the screen. Suddenly they were now paying attention to the designs in the textiles of the uh, cloths that were used by uh, the women uh, in the film. They were also looking at the dances that are no longer uh, being practiced by uh, the Igorots. And so it was more of a uh, welcoming home uh, of uh, a long lost uh, memory for many of the um, uh, Igorots. Uh, so uh, as a summation, I guess, one could uh, see the power of uh, the documentary in um, inciting people uh, to uh, think, let's say, the way uh, Wooster would like, uh, uh, would like him to think, uh, would like them to think about the Filipinos or on the other hand, uh, the documentary can also be a memory, uh, a document that uh, could bring back the past. And uh, with that, uh, we find the very um, important significance of the documentary as a documentary heritage that we need to preserve and we need to uh, value as very much a part of our visual legacy in the country.